Hello everyone and welcome to today's wonderful webinar by M Square Media on Mount St. Vincent University online classes and incoming intakes. I see a lot of attendees on the process of joining in, hoping that all of you are safe and healthy. I would like to say thank you for taking out time and being here with today us. I'm Chitra Sani and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. For those who don't know me, I'm manager for Mount St. Vincent University at Amscare Media, and I'm delighted and pleased to introduce Ashley James Chow, who is our international business development consultant, and Kay Balai, who is our international student advisor. So further any delay, let's kick start things off by welcoming our presenters, Ashley and Kay, over to you. Hi, everybody. Good morning from Halifax, Nova Scotia, and good evening to you in uh, wherever you are in the region of South Asia. Um, we are, Kay and I are super delighted that you're joining us today. We are so excited to be having you here, and we can't wait to tell you about all the wonderful things that we are doing at Mount St. Vincent University for this fall 2020 semester. So thank you for joining in. Right now, I'm just going to head and share my screen. And uh, so we can start with the information session on fall 2020 semester. Thank you again. Okay, it's just some practical information for today, boys and girls, um, you are muted. With your video feature off, so we can allow for a disturbance-free session. Um, throughout the information session, you will see on the bottom of your screen a questions tab and uh, please insert all of your questions there and we'll be happy to answer them at the end of your session. As well, you will see on the bottom of your screen a poll tab. Now, um, there, are some, there are three questions that we are posing to you today in our poll so we can better understand your needs and we can better support you. So um, if you can take just a few moments right now to answer the poll questions, there are three all together. Number one, have you received admission to Mount St. Vincent University for this fall 2020 semester, yes or no? The second question, do you intend to register for online classes for this fall 2020 semester? Okay, there are four options for you to choose from, so please pick the choice that would um, interest you the most. And then last but not least, it says, do you have a study permit? And there are three selections as well. Yes, no, but I've applied and I'm waiting for approval because everything's in lockdown and so the visa application center is closed. Or no, I have not applied yet. Okay, so please take the next few seconds to answer uh, this polling question. The reason Kay and I want to ask you these questions is because we want to better understand what situation you are in. We want to better understand what you are thinking and what your decision making process is going to be like. And then with these answers, we are also able to help you and support you and maybe make some changes to the system based on your needs. So please answer uh, the poll questions right now. I'm going to give you another 10 seconds. Okay, I can see that there are 37 of you who have answered the poll. This is awesome. Some are saying that they can't see the third question. Uh, just scroll down. If you scroll down, you will see the third question. If you scroll up, you can see all the, at the beginning of the question, you scroll down. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for answering our poll.
Okay, now let's continue moving on with our information session. We will tally the votes later, and uh, this will really help us to support you um, in this coming September 2020 semester. So thank you very much. Okay, and of course, um, our team is online to support you with any, with any technical issues, so feel free to connect with them. Um, I'm just going to start by Sorry, one second. I'm just going to start by introducing myself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ashley Jane, and um, uh, many of my students call me AJ. Uh, I'm originally from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and I moved to Halifax, Nova Scotia uh, to become an international student in 2006. So I started my Bachelor of Public Relations program in 2006. During my studies, I also had the opportunity to do a co-op or what is called a work internship, a paid work internship, so a co-op. And I got to do three different work placements all within here in Nova Scotia. Um, it was a really challenging experience, but a very rewarding one because not only are you able to learn uh, in the classroom some really great theoretical information, but you get to apply that theory to practice when you are uh, in a working internship environment. So that was one of the cool opportunities that I received. Um, I valued my time uh, a lot as an international student at Mount St. Vincent. Um, I like to tell people, yes, you know, I grew up in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, but I actually grew into the person that I am today because of my experiences at Mount St. Vincent University. So I will always value uh, that educational time. Um, the university never failed to elevate me, to, to, to push me to do more challenging um, experiences. So, you know, it really pushed me to become more involved and engaged. You know, I volunteer a lot during my time uh, studying in my undergraduate degree. But some of the really great things that also came out of this experience is the connections that I made, not only to industry, but the lifelong friends that I uh, have come to know and meet. And uh, this is also where I met Kay Balite uh, in 2008 at my, our undergraduate studies together. So over to you, Kay. Yes, so I'm Kay Balite. And as Ashley mentioned, we met in 2008 because that's when I actually came to Canada. Uh, to study at the Mount. Um, when I started, I was looking for different universities and the Mount felt the most welcoming and most personalized to me. So I was very pleased to be welcomed by a university that actually knew um, what my needs were, um, called me by my name and basically followed up and supported me from the beginning up until the end. Um, I was very happy with the people who I met and these same people were actually the ones who encouraged me to be <clears throat> very involved at the Mount. So I was able to volunteer and have different leadership roles. And because I volunteered, um, I was able to get references and build my network, which led to actually several job opportunities on campus. So I really appreciate the opportunities given to me at, uh, at the Mount. I was able to, you know, connect with my professors through have, by having like a teacher assistant position, connected with my fellow students by being involved through events um, on, on campus. And academically speaking, my professors knew me very well to the point where they actually knew what exactly I needed to be successful in my classes. So in terms of academics and overall personal growth, the Mount has been a strong foundation for me. Um, right now, since graduating, I've become the, uh, re I've become a reg regulated international student immigration advisor. So in Canada, any, person who is advising on immigration has to be certified by the Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council. And by having this certification, we are 
actually um, monitored and the advice that you receive is sound and is up to date. So anything that has to do with your immigration in terms of, a, of being a student, I will be the one who will be assisting you and making sure that you know exactly how to proceed. Awesome. Okay. So I think we're ready for... Awesome. So uh, thank you so much, Kay. So everyone um, tuning in, if you're tuning in late, just letting you know that today's agenda will consist of a quick update from Mount St. Vincent University regarding what we're doing currently. So an update surrounding COVID-19 policies. And then Kay and I are going to actually tell you a little bit about what online learning at MSVU is uh, about, and we're actually really proud of the offerings that we're going to share with you today. And then after we talk about online courses, Kay is gonna give you a little bit more in-depth information on our different support systems that we have in place for all of our students studying online, whether in Canada or internationally. And then I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about tuition and refund policies. And then uh, something else that's really important, Kay, as the designated regulated international student immigration advisor, she's gonna talk to you about the temporary policies surrounding the study permit and the postgraduate work permit program here in Canada. Right after the immigration session, we will then uh, be able to answer your questions. So pop your questions into the questions tab and we'll be able to answer your questions at the end of our information session. All right, so let's go. All right, just to give you a brief update, what is happening here at Mount St. Vincent University uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic? So number one, applications for fall 2020 are still open. I know that most of you have already applied. Most of you already have your admission. So congratulations. We can't wait to welcome you to our really close knit community. Currently summer session one or so summer semester one is happening right now and ending on June 19th. Summer session two will be beginning in July to August. And uh, as you know, all of our summer courses are going online. And one really fun fact, actually, this year in the summer, 10 um, registrations for our summer courses online have increased by 10%. So it just tells you how robust and engaged our student body is, even though they're studying from home. We have recently announced two weeks ago that all of our fall 2020 courses are moving online. Stay tuned for more updates. Kay is going to give you some information about our fall 2020 courses. If you have been accepted conditionally and you have to do our university bridging program or our graduate preparatory program, all of our EAP programs have also moved online. For those who are taking it this summer, you know that classes have already started. And for those who are going to be taking it this September or who are thinking of taking it this September, don't worry, I will reach out to you very soon. Or our EAP program manager will reach out to you very soon with information on how to register. Of course, as you know, course registration is open right now. So you can always log on on your mobile device or on your computer laptop and then find all the different courses that are available in the fall online. Please, here's another very important public service announcement from K and I to you. Please check your email. The reason why is because we have been sending many, many updates at least once every week or once every two weeks to let you know what is happening on campus. We also want to inform you of very important updates, like what's happening with the fall, what's happening with the summer classes, what's happening with on-campus services, what's going on with um, COVID-19 in Halifax. So all of those really important updates will go to your email. So please check the email. Um, and especially if you have access to your MSVU email, please check that as well. Last but not least, if you need information now, as soon as possible, you can always go to msvu.ca slash coronavirus for the most important updates. So the same updates that we send you by email are the same uh, that will be visible on the coronavirus msvu.ca website. Over to you, Kay. Okay, thank you, Ashley. Um, online learning part one. So Moodle, 
if you have not heard about this, is the main online platform that the university uses to communicate with the students. So basically, your professors will have a, a section for you. So in each class, you will have your own Moodle section. You have to log in in order to access your class readings, your lecture presentations. Um, you'll have your online quizzes. Um, some professors have the exams online as well. So you'll be able to do it at the time that you need it uh, through distance or online learning. Um, the other thing that you need to make sure is to always check Moodle because announcements and updates from your professors are always posted on this platform. You will also have the opportunity to meet and have class discussions with your classmates because we highly value peer-to-peer -peer learning, which means you and your classmates will be uh, giving in your reflection or your insight to what you've learned and your professors will host online uh, post discussions where you will be graded. So participation is very important and your professors must see that you are actively engaging and they do that through Moodle. The other platform that you must know about is Blackboard or Collaborate. So this is a software or an app for online learning. Um, we are one of the leading universities in providing online learning. And this platform is actually very interactive and very convenient. So when you log in, just like how you're logged in now, it's very similar to in-person class. You can raise your hand, you can speak, you can be put into small groups for discussions, and you can give your own presentations. Um, the other convenient part about having Blackboard or online collaborate is that your sessions or your classes will be recorded, which means you will always have access to the class that you may have missed or maybe you your inter internet connection was not very good, so you had to drop out. When your internet connection is back on, you can always go back and play the lectures. In fact, um, our English for additional language students have been very successful in um, their classes because of this um, uh, feature. So a lot of you may be wondering about the uh, fall 2020 course schedule. We just wanted to let you know that we are working very hard and as fast as we can to finalize the course schedule. So this will be rolled out hopefully by the end of June or early July. So please make sure to check in by then on what classes will be available to you. And the most important part here is to always consult your academic advisor before choosing your classes. There are specific classes that you have to take, but also there are flexible classes that you can choose based on your interest. And your academic advisor will be the one to guide you on what classes you're able to take. Once you've met with your academic advisor, you can then proceed with your course registration. There are several ways on how to do this. One of the easiest and most convenient ways is by downloading our university app called Elucian Go. So as you'll see on the screen, Elucian Go is something that you can download on your mobile and register through, uh, through this app. If you are not able to do this, one other way that you can register is by emailing our registrar's office or by logging in to my mount. Um, one other thing about online learning is our Mount 101 program. So this is designed for new students. So it's for all of you right now. Um, undergraduate or graduate students um, can, will have access to this. However, if you are an undergraduate student, you must complete this program. 
Um, it's very, very informative. Uh, you will learn all about the different student services, university procedures and policies, as well as what academic supports are available to you. You will automatically have access to this uh, program through Moodle. And we just want to make sure that you don't miss out because if you do not know what is available to you, then you will not be able to access the support services. So just making sure that you complete this by your first semester. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Kay. That was a very um, a helpful information, especially for students who don't know what online learning classes are going to be like at the map. Um, before I move on, for everybody watching right now, uh, students, please, if you have a question, please insert your questions under Q&A on the bottom of your screen. You can see questions. Um, if you have any, please put them in that section and we will address your questions at the Q&A question and answer uh, period. Okay, so, oops, part two online learning at MSVU. So Kay already mentioned all these wonderful systems that we have in place, Moodle, Blackboard, Collaborate, um, Mount 101. I know when I was a student 10 years ago, I took many online classes as well. I think I took half a dozen, maybe six online classes. And at that time, we still also had Moodle and Blackboard Collaborate. But I can tell you that it is so vastly different right now because technology has become so much better, so much more accessible, and it's gonna be so much more engaging for you uh, studying from home when you are on an online class. So um, I quite enjoyed the online class experience. I remember uh, taking it at, uh, in the evening times or you know, during the day if I had time on the weekend. So, um, I felt like I was still part of a class, but you have to be super self-motivated to watch uh, those videos or be in your class, you know. But the coolest part of it is just sort of logging into your class, but being in your pajamas. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. <laughs> okay, so moving on to part two. Um, okay, what are these words? Synchronous and asynchronous. So these are terms that you are going to be hearing a lot. Uh, throughout your time at Mount St. Vincent University. So let's start with synchronous. What is synchronous? So that means that a synchronous online class is happening in real time, okay? So think about it like a team of synchronized swimmers at an Olympics, they have to do it all together at one time. This is what a synchronous class is. So you have to log in at that specific time according to uh, the schedule. Okay, but what is asynchronous? Asynchronous means that you can log in anytime to view your class, whether in the morning. And so this is more appropriate for all of our international students because we all have different time zones. Right now in India, it's probably um, six o'clock almost. And then here in Halifax is 9.23 a.m. So uh, an asynchronous class, you can log in at any time to view uh, your uh, class recordings. And, but what does that mean? Does that mean you can hand in your assignments at any time you want or do your tests at any time you want? No, there's actually deadlines. Um, so midterms, exams, and deadlines, maybe you have a given time frame uh, to log into Moodle to finish your test. Maybe it's only 24 hours. Okay, so there are different systems that will be in place for you during uh, your course. And the way that a course is structured is also dependent on your professor. So perhaps your professors might not have any midterms or exams. Maybe you just have big assignments, you know, that, that is 20% of your mark, right? So, uh, or a big research project. So there are different structures and our professors are very understanding, of course, that not all their students are going to be from Canada. So they're going to be as flexible as they can to offer a more adaptive course material for you. Right now, very quickly, I'm going to show you a, a two minute video about asynchronous courses.
You already know that the Mount has great online courses, but did you know you can take some classes asynchronously? So what is an asynchronous course? An asynchronous course is self-paced. You don't have a weekly meeting with your instructor scheduled in your calendar, so you can choose both when and where your learning takes place each week. Using our cutting edge learning technologies, you will have everything you need to succeed at your fingertips. Just log on to your course page and get ready to learn. So are there deadlines? Yes. You will work with a course outline and complete your work according to the schedule. There are still deadlines to be met and tests to be taken. Um, actually, However, you will have fewer scheduling commitments than in a campus course. Yes. Can, can, we, can, can we switch from the presentation to the video, please? Um, I think the attendees are not able to see the video. Oh, I thought I shared it. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, you can come out of the presentation mode uh, and then try switching. Oh, that's great. Oh, I see. Sorry, stop here. Hi. Can you see it now? Yes. Yep. Eight online courses. You already know that the Mount has great online courses, but did you know you can take some classes asynchronously? So what is an asynchronous course? An asynchronous course is self-paced. You don't have a weekly meeting with your instructor scheduled in your calendar, so you can choose both when and where your learning takes place each week. Using our cutting edge learning technologies, you will have everything you need to succeed at your fingertips. Just log on to your course page and get ready to learn. So are there deadlines? Yes. You will work with a course outline and complete your work according to the schedule. There are still deadlines to be met and tests to be taken. However, you will have fewer scheduling commitments than in a campus course. Will I have a professor? Of course! Your courses are designed to maximize your contact with your professor. They will be available to answer your questions via email and will provide feedback on your assignments. You might see them responding to discussion posts sharing a weekly update, or even posting comments on a video or chatting on social media. But will I learn as much as in a face-to-face -face class? Absolutely. Our asynchronous classes are held to the same standards as our face-to-face -face classes. They have been designed by a team of learning professionals, and all of our courses are created by Mount professors, many of whom teach online and face-to-face. -face. An asynchronous class allows you to juggle your work, home, and everyday life commitments by giving you flexibility. Asynchronous learning is a great option at the Mount. Visit msvu.ca forward slash TLCOL to learn more about which courses are offered asynchronously this term. Okay, so we hope that that video sort of explained a little bit more to you about what an asynchronous class is. So now just going back to the presentation. So don't forget, you can also find all this information on our uh, online learning website. It's msvu.ca slash TLCOL. I just checked the link today and uh, for some reason the link is not working, but you can also go to msvu.ca slash distance, D-I-S-T-A-N-C-E. Okay, the last uh, thing I want to address is the books and your course material. A lot of students ask me, but Ms. Ashley, how am I supposed to get my books? I don't live in Canada. Well, we have different options available to you. Many of our students can get their books online from the Mount St. Vincent University bookstore. So our, our official bookstore. If you go to msvu.ca slash bookstore, and you can go on there, you can find all of your textbooks uh, that your professors uh, have asked you to to, to buy on that website. Now, of course, the, you know, the bookstore is in Canada and there will be shipping and uh, extra charges that comes along with shipping your textbooks to you. However, um, if you can find another alternative, um, for example, you can maybe try Amazon or the different online shopping websites that are available to you in India, um, that could be another option. Don't tell the university that I told you that, okay? Um, another option as well, don't forget, your professors know that 
Um, a lot of you might be studying online, but not in Canada. So maybe you do not have the same access to some of the books that your Canadian colleagues might have. So um, there are opportunities where your professors will make you buy a textbook, but it will be a digital copy. So you will have a digital PDF copy uh, with you to use when you are online. Other, another option is that the professor will be providing the course material to you themselves. So they will upload all of the information and readings and course materials on Moodle for you to access. So some professors might need you to buy a textbook, some might not. But understanding that professors at Mount St. Vincent University care about you and your learning, they will do their best to be ultra flexible. Okay? Oops. Okay, so we are definitely here to help regardless if we are working in the office or from home. We are working very hard to make sure that you receive the support that you need. Some of the few services that will be available to you is one, Center for Academic Advising and Student Success. Um, this is the department in charge for making sure that students are well supported throughout their academics. They offer several services such as Mount 101, which I've already talked a little bit about. Um, Writing Resource Center is the other one. And this particular service will help you with your paper. So if you're not sure how to structure your paper or organize your paper, uh, the, this department you can make an appointment with and they will help you by giving you feedback on the paper that you have written. The other service is what we call the uh, learning strategist. So not every university actually offers this service and we are very fortunate at the Mount that we have a person who can help you with understanding your course syllabus? So the syllabus is basically the contract that you have between your professor and yourself. It will outline the uh, course requirements, the schedule of your courses. So making sure that you can follow chapters and different course readings, as well as how your grades will be broken down. So it will outline if you have um, two exams, three papers, participation, and it will say what points will be allotted for each. Uh, throughout your classes, you will have many assignments. So maybe it's uh, different from what you're used to, but can, uh, in Canada, the uh, academic classes typically require a lot of coursework. So within the 12 week period, you may have several assignments, several quizzes, a midterm exam, a final exam, a presentation, and maybe two other papers. So that seems a lot for one course, uh, for one course, and that's why there are people to help you and make sure that you manage your time very well. Now, in terms of academic advising, this center is only for undergraduate students. For graduate students, you must talk with your departmental program advisor, okay? Uh, your program advisor can be found on your data form, so please make sure to check who your program advisor is and email them before registering for your classes. Um, the other new program that we have, and Ashley Jane and I are actually one of the uh, first year personal advisors, um, is it's basically a new program designed to help support new students. So we will be following up with the uh, students that are assigned to us. Make sure that you are aware of all the support services available to you. Check, we will check in to make sure that you are making the progress that you need in order to be successful in your student life at the Mount. And also, we will be uh, participating in different online events that is hosted to make sure that you meet other students and get to know other people within the university. Um, 
one of the most important student service is, of course, the International Education Center. Uh, this is my department, and we offer several services, but I'm only going to discuss a few that is very relevant to you right now. So the primary one is, of course, immigration advising. Um, I will be talking a little bit more about this later. Um, the other thing that we provide is personal and cultural advising. So there's going to be a lot of transition for you to be successful in the Canadian uh, environment. So if you have any issues, concerns, something that you're not sure about, you can definitely reach out to me as your international student advisor, and I will be the one to help you bridge that understanding or make sure that your concerns as an international student is heard. Another exciting program that we are launching for fall is the uh, study and learning groups. So this is an, a place where you can meet other students. Um, you will be assigned into groups based on the learning needs that you, that you have. So you will get to interact with other students and learn from other students. So we value diversity and through learning from your peers or your other classmates or students at the Mount, you will actually have a better uh, or higher academic success um, throughout your studies. Mount 101 is, again, we've already, I've already talked about this, just making sure that you complete this within your first semester because we don't want you to miss out on what the university has to offer for you. Um, the other thing that I, Ashley Jane already showed you uh, is an example of the video tutorials that will help explain online learning. So just as what you watch with asynchronous and synchronous uh, video, there will be many more short videos that will help you learn about the different programs or tools that we use for your uh, academic course delivery. One thing that I want to make sure that you know about is Office 365. So as a student, you are expected to have a laptop. You will be required to submit all of your assignments electronically. Nothing will be handwritten and submitted by paper, which means you need to have access to Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Excel, OneDrive and other Microsoft apps. But not to worry, this is not something that you have to purchase on your own. You actually are entitled to a free download of all the Microsoft apps. And you can access this uh, download by going onto your MyMount account. So go on to msvu.ca slash MyMount, and you will be able to download a full office suite that you are required to have for your academic studies. Thank you. Awesome. On to you, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. That was very helpful. Okay, I'm just going to quickly talk about um, money because it's important. And I'm also going to talk about on-campus services for a bit. So here is what's going on. Uh, for undergraduate students, if you have received an entrance scholarship form, but you haven't confirmed your entrance scholarship, your deadline has been extended. So if you would like more information on this, please email questions at msvu.ca. You are also entitled to first year bursaries. So this program has now moved online. If you are interested in knowing more, you go to msvu.ca slash financial aid. Currently this year for the fall 2020 semester, we have not um, updated our uh, tuition fee and other miscellaneous fee uh, payments yet. Usually every year at Mount St. Vincent University in June is when they announce the new fees for the new year. However, they have not announced uh, the new fees yet. And so please stay tuned while they make their decisions. We will send you an email update from the university letting you know what the new payment schedule will be like. Will there be a refund? OK, 
Okay, lots of students are asking me these questions. Yes, we have refund policies at Mount St. Vincent University. Okay, and so at Mount St. Vincent, usually in the fall semester, if you register for fall classes, your payments are due in the second week of classes. So this year, your payment will be due in September 16, 2020. That's a Wednesday. This is also the last day that you can remove or add courses. Now, if you are taking courses and the registration deadline has passed and uh, the uh, payment deadline has passed and you're in your second week of classes and you decide, oh my goodness, this is not for me. I really don't want to take this class. You can get a refund, but your refund will be only 90% of your, of your fee. Okay. And so the longer you wait after your deadline, the lesser refund you will get. So it's at either at a 90% in the first week. 65% in the second week and then 30% in the third week. And then if you do not remove yourself from your class a month after, you will get no refund. Okay, so there is a refund schedule that happens um, with our, with our uh, payment policy. If you want more information, just email me or go to msvu.ca slash tuition right on the bottom of their, your screen. Just giving you an update about on-campus services, such as residence and meal plans, there is no information right now. Now, I know a lot of students have more questions than we have answers to, but I can assure you that we are working hard every day. And the reason why there isn't any information right now is because they are trying their best to see if there's any possibility to open residences or offer a meal plan to our students. They don't know yet what is happening with on-campus services such as athletics and the gym or our library services. So stay tuned. All of this information will be coming to you very shortly in the next three weeks. You will know what is going on by the first week of July, I can promise you that. So uh, we've been having a lot of meetings just to make sure that everyone can socially, um, can safely socially distance, but also understanding that we wanna keep the safety of our community as a priority as well. So we will get updates to you very soon. Okay, thank you. So I think this is a topic that many of you are very concerned about. Um, again, if I don't cover your questions, um, we will have an opportunity to uh, answer them after the presentation. So, study permit. Um, study, uh, sorry, students may begin their academic studies or continue with their academic studies outside Canada without a study permit. Okay, so a lot of you are asking. You know, can I begin my classes without a study permit or I've submitted an application, but I have not heard back. Can I start my studies? Yes, absolutely. You may begin and you are not violating any immigration rules. Okay. The other thing is your post graduation work permit. So in relation to your study permit, only students with an approved study permit who takes classes outside Canada will have their studies counted towards their post-graduation work permit. So a lot of you are asking, how will my online classes affect my ability or eligibility, sorry, for the work permit? So again, if you have a study permit or have been approved for a study permit, no worries because your classes up until December 31 will be counted in the length of your work permit. Now, it is very important that all students with a study permit must maintain full-time status, okay? So if you are not able to maintain full-time status, you must reach out to me so that we can figure out what we need to do in order to support your future application for the work permit. Just for your information, full-time classes means you have to take three classes each semester. And this is both for undergraduate and graduate students, okay? If 
you do not have a study permit and you begin your classes, unfortunately, your class up until December 31 will not be counted in the length of your work permit. So yes, you can still begin your classes because again, you do not need a study permit to study online. However, that portion of your class period will not be counted in the length of your work permit, but you will still be eligible for the work permit. Okay, so again, you will you can still qualify for the work permit. It's just that the length of time will not be counted. I hope that was clear. If not, let me know. Okay, would you like me to show the IRCC website? Oh, sure. The link is, yes, down there. So this is the uh, website dedicated to uh, temporary policies surrounding COVID-19 by the Government of Canada for visitors, uh, foreign workers, and students. And so these are for temporary resident visa programs, including study permits. So if you go to this website here, um, I know the URL is really long. Um, but this is where IRCC or the Government of Canada will update uh, everything that has to do with international student study permits, uh, what online courses and temporary policies surrounding post-graduation work permit eligibility, and so on and so forth. So every, everything is here on this site um, from the Government of Canada for your information. The other thing that I wanted to mention, and Ashley Jane, if you can please pull it up, is we created a page mm -hmm specifically for frequently asked questions. In the IEC? Yes. Oh, I guess all the short links are not working today. Uh, all the way down, quick links, COVID-19, yes. So this page helps answer the most common questions that students have for us. In the next weeks to come, there, there will be, a, we are creating. So there's a specific page just for new students. And we will email this out to all students that have been accepted. Okay, so make sure to watch in your email. That way you can be up to date with the immigration information that you are looking for. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kay. That was really important information that you covered. At this moment in time, um, um, we, we believe, Kay and I believe that we were able to share very quickly with you um, all the different aspects of online learning and the support systems that we have in place. So we are hoping right now to be able to take um, some questions. So I know that uh, a lot of you have many questions. So uh, this is the time that we are going to dedicate to you to help support you. Thank you, Ashley, and thank you for this amazing and informative session for all of your uh, students. So we are having many questions from the students. I know, I can see. <laughs> okay. So the frequent question I'm getting from the student is about uh, when they can travel to Canada. So this is a very frequent question. They okay. just want to know if they registered for September 2020 online classes and uh, then the border will be open and student can fly to Canada, can they come to Canada and join the face-to-face -face classes? So right now at this moment, um, the travel restriction is still on for Canada. So all students are not encouraged and they are not encouraged to come and travel to Canada right now. The government hasn't released any information to say when they will lift 
the travel restriction. So at this moment in time, no students are allowed to travel to Canada for their studies. Now, if for, um, in the future, it's only June, if by September or October, the travel bans are lifted and um, you have your study permit and the government allows you to come in, that's when uh, we can start helping you to travel to Canada and helping you to prepare for your studies here. So at this point, the government of Canada hasn't given us any updates about when other international students are allowed back in or if they're even allowed to travel to Canada right now. Thank you, Ashley. And we also get uh, many questions about our graduate preparatory program. Students wanted to know if they didn't score grade B in this course, will they be able to attempt exam one more time? And they also wanted to know the complexity of this program and a little bit uh, detail about the program. Will it be recorded or it will be a live classes for GPP? Okay, so the graduate preparatory program if you do not successfully get a passing mark you are permitted to take it one more time okay so on your second attempt you must successfully pass this class usually when you take the gpp you are also required to take an academic class so this other class is something that you also have to pass. Again, you may retake this class. However, there are fees that come with it. So in addition to the time and effort that you have to put in again, you will also have to pay for the fees again. Um, in terms of content and the uh, recording, so it will be live. So as you've already learned, this class is going to be synchronous, which means you have to go online at a particular time and be with your class, your classmates, your teachers, everything will be live, but also recorded for your convenience, okay? Um, the topics that are covered are, so depending on, on your uh, program, uh, there's gonna be a lot of heavy research involved. There's a lot of writing. There could be a lot of presentations. Uh, these are the major skills that you will develop. So very, very different from your undergraduate degree. I've honestly spoken with so many of our graduate students and a lot of them have said that the GPP prepared them for their graduate classes. And students who did not take GPP actually struggled quite a bit in terms of being successful in their graduate classes. So if you are in this class, um, you will definitely come out prepared for your program of study. Thank you, Ashley and Kay for answering this question. We also have one more question about uh, our online uh, learning platform. The student just wanted to know, will there be an introduction class about the model and Mount 101? So Mount 101 is going to be the introduction to all the uh, expectations, all the services, and all the uh, procedures and policies about the university. Um, Mount 101 is going to be on Moodle, and there is a video on how to access Moodle. So by the time we finalize all the course schedule, as well as the orientation and student preparation for fall semester. These information will be emailed to the students and they will have access to Moodle tutorial that will help them get on MyMount. And MyMount will be the main uh, tutorial or support to inform students about online learning and student services. Mm -hmm. Was and that clear? Thank you, Kay. We also have one more question from one, uh, one of our students. 
and he wanted to know about how students are going to manage the time zone differences and uh, the internet connectivity. So, um, like I said earlier, we have two types of online courses, asynchronous and an asynchronous. And so the asynchronous classes will be uh, available for you to look at uh, in three weeks. So right now our, our fall 2020 course schedule is 80% complete. We're just waiting to see what other additional courses that we can offer so we can continue ensuring that your program uh, can run its course, even if it's online. So right now it's 80% complete, but in three weeks you'll find out which courses are offered asynchronously. Some courses will be um, both synchronous and asynchronous, which means like the graduate preparatory program, you have to log in live, but if you miss it, at least you'll have a recording uh, so you can manage in your international time zone. Does that answer your time zone questions? Thank you, Ashley. I hope this is, uh, you know, informative for the students. So we also get query about study permit. So there are many students who have submitted their, you know, study permit application, but they haven't heard back from the High Commission. And there are still many students who haven't applied for their study permit. So the student wanted to know, can they defer their, uh, you know, intake or they can start taking online classes without having a study permit? So I believe I've covered that in my immigration slide, but I'll repeat it again. Um, international students can take online classes outside Canada without a study permit. You are only required to have a study permit if you are studying in Canada, okay? Now, not all of you have submitted a study permit application. We encourage you to do it as soon as possible. IRCC is still taking in applications while there is a pause on the processing of the applications because the local visa application centers are not taking in biometrics, medical exams, and so on. Um, your submitted application will be processed on a first come first serve basis. So the sooner you submit your application, the sooner you will be in line for your application to be processed. Even though your application is not complete, your application will not be rejected. You will be given the time that is reasonable for you to submit the other requirements. Okay, so don't worry about not submitting a complete application because immigration understands that you do not have access to all of the documents and requirements that you have to submit, whether it is your English language test or your medical exam or your biometrics. Thank you, Kay, for explaining this. We also have a question from students, uh, those who haven't applied for their post-study, uh, for their study permit, they wanted to know because uh, their final result is still pending, but they have conditional acceptance from the mount. They wanted to know what is the last date to defer their offer letter for January 2021. I think I can answer this question. Um, I think you need to ensure um, that you give yourself enough time, okay? So time is very important. Time management is very important here. So I would say if you don't know, if you're waiting for your study permit to make your decision about deferral, of course, don't defer now because it's only June. There could be many things that could happen in the next eight weeks. Now, if it comes to the middle of August, okay, or even the third week of August, and you don't get your study permit, and you feel like you want to defer, that's when you do it. I would say near the end of August. And it's very easy, you just email me and say, hi, Ashley, I want to start in January. And I'll be like, okay. Okay, thank you, Ashley. So Ashley, oh, wow. It's about the students who are going to appear for their grade 12 exams in yes. coming, coming months. 
so they just want you to know if there are any particular date to defer the intake because they are not having their final results yeah it would be the same answer as the study permit it would be in august okay so we do have one student who have his study permit for mount st vincent university for may 2020 intake but uh, the student is still in india and student wanted to know he has applied for bachelor of arts now he wanted to change the program to bachelor of business administration is it possible for september 2020 online classes so um who um can i get the name of the student that asked this question chitra do you know yes i have it, to it's yeah. okay so I'm going to answer your question. For the student who asked if uh, you have admission to a BA general studies, but you want to change to a BBA and you have received your study permit for May 2020, that's awesome. I'm so happy that you are completed all of your steps. Um, I don't think we will be able to uh, change your program to the BBA. I'm sure the reason the, the main reason why you're probably in the BA general studies is because you probably did not uh, demonstrate that you had a grade 12 mathematics subject. Okay, and the only way that you can change your program into the Bachelor of Business Administration is if you show me in your grade 12, you have mathematics. Okay, so um, if you want to talk about that more personally, we can take it offline and you can send me an email and we can chat. So thank you, Ashley. We are still having many questions, but they are again, uh, related to deferment or the online classes. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. there are students who wanted to know about if the travel ban lifted and things will back to normal. Will there be part-time jobs available for international students? So there are uh, some general questions which we have already discussed in the session. And uh, I believe we have revert to all the questions because now we just have the same questions coming again and again which you have already discussed yes so uh, i would like to say thanks to all the students who have joined us today and if any of your question is not answered here please do not worry about it okay you have contact detail of ashley and k you can write them your queries and they will answer you back right and for any other information you can also reach out the indian at india at msvu.ca so uh, thank you for joining us today and i hope this session was informative for you please do not hesitate to contact any of us uh, india team or k or ashley in canada for your queries ashley and k would you like to say something to our students sure k would you like to start yeah, so I am very excited to meet you, hopefully all in January. Um, again, if you need anything in between now and when you come, more than happy to, you know, set up a Skype for business appointment with you. We can talk face-to-face -face or email, whatever works. Uh, we are here to support you, and we would rather that you reach out to us and make sure that you are informed and get the student service that you uh, that you need rather than stay quiet and we're not sure what's going on. So again, we're here to help. So just let us know. Thank, thank you. Kay. I would like to thank all the students on the behalf of MScale Media and Mount St. Vincent University to take out time to join us today for this wonderful session. And uh, if you are still having any questions and we haven't answered back, don't worry you'll be getting a detailed email on your questions. Stay safe, stay tuned, and do not forget to register for your online classes, those who are having study permit, or those who have applied for their study permit. Thank you. Have a good day.